Hinky dinky parley roo. Mrs. Rogers. Mrs. Rogers! Land sakes, Homer, where's your mind? I'm right here. Well, uh, where have you been? I've been here for 20 minutes. You have? Oh, uh, take a letter. I was right in the middle of one until you got back in the army. <laughs> I'd give her pretty to know what you were thinking about. Oh, wouldn't you, though? <laughs> Never mind, you take another letter. To the uh, open hearth foreman, and notify all members that there will be a meeting of the Bundy American Legion. Post number two, five. Yeah. Don't bother, I'll go down and tell them myself. My land, any excuse to get down there with those iron workers. He's got something to say to you. Give him a break. Go ahead, Homer. Commander Wheeler. Comrades of the Bundy American Legion Post, number 25. It has come to my attention that our little post hasn't money enough in its treasury to send our drill team to the American Legion Convention in New York City. So, I have arranged for the company to finance the trip. Right. Why? Why? Boys, I think that's mighty white of the bus. Homer here was just a low down buck private under me during the war. And it just goes to show you he's still the same. And although we don't expect to pay you back in money, we can pay him back with what's in our hearts. You're right! I go to lunch. Get back to work. Good going, Homer. Couple of jab and a hamburger to take out. Mango cow, hit and run. Mango cow, hit and run. Onions? No onions. All the roses. All the roses. Hiya, baby. Hiya, doll. What kept you? The boss called a meeting. Ain't you heard? We're going to the convention. Hey. If you're going to New York, you've got to start acting like a gentleman. Gee, I won't have nothing to do while you're gone. That's just what I want. And see that you don't do nothing. <laughs> when are you leaving, Lamington? Does he? But we'd like to eat before then. What do you want, Plowface? <laughs> <laughs> Plowface! <laughs> I'll have a vegetable plate without the egg. Yeah, me too. Two loads of hay, hold the cackle. Two loads of hay, hold the cackle. Cover, cover with a little cream. I'll have a cup of cream with a little coffee. <laughs> Plow face. <laughs> Gee, Ben, I ain't been in New York since they dumped us off in Hoboken. Well, I left a lot of unfinished business. <laughs> What's eating you? <laughs> I was thinking about that first night in New York. <laughs> <laughs> what about it? <laughs> well, you remember when you went up to see Big Rosie and Chesty Webb was popping light globes outside the door? <laughs> oh, shut up, shut up. <laughs> uh, Benny here does a swan dive out the window thinking it's a guy with a gun. 
He's in such a hurry to get out, he forgets his overcoat, and the next day, Chester shows up wearing it. Did <laughs> <laughs> you just see his face? I never saw anything like it, buddy. <laughs> Chesty Webb never outsmarted me in his life, see? <laughs> Any of you guys know Chesty? No, but we've heard plenty about him. I'll tell you something about him. He's the biggest double-crossing four-flusher that ever disgraced a uniform. There you are, sugar bear. Chesty Webb. Ho, ho, ho. Hmm. Hey. Do you remember that Lulu in Bordeaux? No. Huh? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, Chesty gave her his ring to remember him by. But the next day she meets me. And I've been wearing it ever since. Look. <laughs> Look, a genuine Inox. Ain't that a beaut? Looks like something you got out of a box of Cracker Jack. <laughs> yeah, it's a... What? Hiya, Benny. Chesty Webb. Well, speaking of the devil, we were just talking about you. Yeah, I heard you. You ain't changed a bit, have you, Ben? Still blowing off, ladies, man. <laughs> Gents, I ask you, get a load of that puss. <laughs> What's the matter with my face? What's the matter with it? Didn't you just take a look at it? Why, that's a map that even a mother couldn't love. You leave my mother out of this. Don't take none of his lip, Ben. Quiet, swordfish. <laughs> swordfish? Ben! Ben, did you hear what he called me? He called me swordfish. He's done enough talking. Now I'm going to do a little slugging. What's that? Well, knowing that you can't read, this says that I've been transferred here from the Pittsfield plant and you're looking at your new foreman. Now, it wouldn't be so smart to slug the new boss, would it? Ah, who can read? Any of the rest of you monkeys that don't like them apples, you can turn in your time. Yeah, well, I'm turning mine in right now, see? No, you're not. We're not going to let this baboon run us out of our jobs and cheat us out of our trip to New York. That's just what he wants. But we're sticking, see? Yeah, we're sticking, see? Hey, you know, you've got more brains than I thought you had. Do you gents mind if I join you? Yes! There's nothing in the rules to say that I gotta eat with you. But Ben, I ain't finished yet. Well, finish. You never was particular. But Snooks, you ain't ate nothing. Peaches, I've had more than I can stand. Goodbye, Benny. Gee, I hope he ain't sick. We got a date for tonight. Just for tonight? Why, a girl with your looks ought to have a date every night. Applesauce. No kidding. You gonna work here? Well, you might call it that. I'm the new foreman. Chester Webb's the name. But you can call me Chesty. Pleased to meet you. What did you say your name was? Opal. Opal Updike. A pretty name for a pretty girl. Yeah, and pretty rotten service if you ask me. How about a check? Oh, riff raffle. Riff raffle. <laughs> Ah, it's too bad a nice girl like you has to put up with that sort of thing. Oh, it won't be for long. I'm taking a course in manicuring. You know, that's what I like. Courage and ambition in a girl. I'll bet you got plenty of ambition. Plenty. What did you say you was doing tonight? Oh, I did have sort of a halfway date with Ben. We were going to Klotsky's. <laughs> that's right, sister. You was going to Klotsky's with Ben. Cut it out, Chesty. <laughs>
This is awful. I won't stand for it, I won't. I don't care if he is my son. I know what she's after. <laughs> she's after his money. Well, if she think... Mrs. Rogers, do you have to knit? You try it. Might calm your nerves. Yeah, I won't. I don't want my nerves calm. Mrs. Rogers, Maybe do you Maybe you'd really... like to dictate something. No, I don't want to dictate anything. Oh. Now, see here, Homer. I'm just getting tired of this. Getting yourself all upset over nothing. Jack's old enough to know his own mind. Oh, you think so, do you? Getting himself involved with the showgirl? Oh. Come in. You want to see me, Homer? Yes, yes, come in, Ben, come in, come in. Come in, come in. Uh, sit down, Ben, sit down. Take your cap off. Uh, yes, and uh, take your cap off, Ben. Now, I don't, well, well, what is the matter with your eye? Well, I, I was minding my own business in Klosky. Yes. And from the oh, blue sky... Well, perhaps you better tell me about that later. That isn't why I sent for you. Sit down, Ben, sit down. Come in. You sent for me? Yes, come in, please. Come in, come in. Come in. Uh, sit right down here, Chester. He said, well, I suppose you ran into a door. No, it was a chair and it ran into me. And you'll run into more than a chair if you don't keep away from Opal. Well, Listen, you here. Yeah. Don't you two start anything in here or I'll finish it. Yeah. Oh, Matt, he started it. Who started what? What are you talking about? Why uh, don't you keep it? Don't make Boys, boys, boys. I want you both to sit down and listen to me. Now, I, I sent for you fellows because, well, we went through a lot together over there, and I, I feel that I can depend on you to help me. Why, Homer, you know I'd cut off my right arm for you. Well, I'll say he would. And hit you right on top of the head with it. Why don't you keep your trap? Ah, just mind your own business. No, You're no, always... No, but no, boys, no, boys, no, boys, no, boys no, never mind my right arm. Never mind. I just had a letter from Jack, and he's mixed up with some New York showgirl. Says he wants to marry her. Well, there, there'll be no showgirl in my family. No, sir. <laughs> I uh, talked to him on the telephone, and you know how kids are. He won't listen to his father. So I figured with you boys going to New York, you could sort of, well, straighten him out. Homer, it's a cinch. Sure, that's right up our alley. Why, do you remember the way we got you out of that jam with the mayor's daughter and Ravigny? <laughs> <laughs> And how I paid off that French waitress with a cigar, give up! Mrs. Rogers, you may go. And uh, take your knitting with you. Yes, sir. The mayor's daughter. Well, it, it was the mayor's daughter. Hello. I haven't got a thing to worry about, Homer. You couldn't have picked a better man to handle that dame than me. Oh, you're awful. You're not going to send him, are you? I can handle this alone, Homer. You can handle it alone. A nice mess uh, you make handling now, it alone. Now, now boys, 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 uh, boys you're, you're both members of the Legion, and I'm counting on you two to forget your differences. I really need you both. Oh, all right. You always was a problem child to me. You were the sloppiest buck private I ever trained. <laughs> Here, get a load of this, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see anything worse? No. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mind, Homer. You tried. <coughs> Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. Now, boys, I want Jack's affair with this girl broken off. I don't care what it costs. No gold digger is going to marry my money. What's this cookie's name? Well, you'll have to find that out. All I know is that she works in some cafe. Now, I'll arrange with the cashier to give you money for expenses, and if it costs any more to get rid of her, you just send the bills to me. You count on me, Homer. Oh, me too. Thank you, boys. Thank you. I, I knew I could. Now, boys, tomorrow, tomorrow you'll be off, and I don't want you to forget the spirit of the old 18th artillery and of the Bundy Post number 25. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
We are the legionnaires, rich, poor, and millionaires. From every post, right from coast to coast, we stand to toast each other again like gentlemen men. We're brothers, one and all, all for one through smiles and care. From our shoes, spats, coats, hats, all the way down and around, we're men of affairs. We're the legionnaires. Hooray! We are the legionnaires, rich, poor, and millionaires, from every post, right from coast to coast, we come to toast to each other again, like men among men. We're brothers, one and all, all for one, through smiles and cares, from our shoes, hats, coats, hats, all the way down in the round, we are men of affairs. We are the legionnaires, rich, poor, and millionaires. From every post, right from coast to coast, we come to toast to each other again, like men among men. We're brothers, one and all, all for one, through smiles and cares. From our shoes, hats, coats, hats, all the way down in the round, we are men of affairs. Money Post. All set? Yes, sir. I have your reservation, sir. Are you Mr. Wheeler? That's me, the commander. Uh, you bought in 14 rooms, right? Yeah. And a private bath for myself. I ain't standing in line for nobody. Excuse me, please, madam. Then, jumping Jerusalem, Turkey. Then, I think Swan, you old string bean, it's great to see you. It's good to see you too, Turkey. What post are you with? Swenson Post Number One, Cross Nest, Minnesota. They named a post after you. Yeah, they did, her. Where's the rest of your gang? There don't was any rest. I am the whole she's. I am the commander and the sergeant major and the adjutant general and all the troops. Yeah, you don't get it, huh? No. Well, you see, I am the only one that lives in Crow's Nest, Minnesota. You oh, get yeah. it, huh? You get it, <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm the man. Uh -huh. Baby, look what you're doing to Mommy Angel. Come here, darling. Come here, baby. Come here, sugar. Here, darling. Here, baby. Here, baby. Come on, dear. Come on. Come on, catch it. Wow. Mm. Wow. 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 Here, darling. Come on. Come on. That's a baby. Come on now. Anything for me? Oh, you have quite a bit of mail today, Miss Lee. Boy Scouts? Only at heart. No, miss. We're uh, legionnaires. I'm the commander. How cute. Would you sign this registration slip, please? She didn't come in with one, miss. My dog, Butch. Oh, your dog. I'll find it. Butch, 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 Butch. I'll find it. Butch, 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 Butch. All right, don't stand around like this. Put out and find the dog, will you? The name's Butch. Butch, 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 Oh, 
Chesty Webb. I just wanted to tell you, if your dog's down here, I'll find him. But I was just thinking he might have run upstairs to your room. Oh, maybe he did. I'll go look now. What is your room number? Just in case I find the dog. In oh, 714. Thanks so much. Oh, I'll carry this myself. Yes, sir. All clear, Commander? Yeah, she has vent hair. Yeah, let's Man, you're fooled her. You dumb clerks, I could mind a knockout. Keep down here, sir. What's the matter, Commander? Getting embarrassed like that. Where's Chesty Webb? I ain't seen him since the dog got lost. Oh. Hey, what's my room number? Five, five, or four, sir. Okay, son, never mind that. Here you are. Thanks. Hi, right, boys. Ah! You don't know it, but you're gonna be my little passport. <laughs> Stay right there and rest easy. Now hold it while Papa cleans up for Mama. Open up, will you? Who is it? It's me. Just a minute, Ben. Come on, Butch. Come on, open it, will you? Butch, you take a nice little step. Open that door, I tell you. What's the idea of locking me out? <laughs> Just an old army custom. Did you find the dog? Nope. Must have got away. Ah, oh, that's too bad. I'd hate to think any of our gang took it. Oh, they wouldn't do that. Oh, no. They'd better not. Say, that Miss Lee's a honey, ain't she? Oh, I don't know. I've seen better. Well, she's good enough for me. I wonder where that dog could have gone. Oh, I wouldn't know. No. You wouldn't know. Hey, I got an idea. If you want to get in good with her, why don't you go out and buy her another dog? Jesse, you've got something there. I'll look up a pet shop. No, no, don't bother doing that. Just get a cab and ask the driver. See you later. <laughs> Darn hiccups. <clears throat> Jesse, you better get them stopped right away. If they get started, they're terrible. Oh, that'll be all right. <coughs> now, don't kid about it. It's dangerous. Why, I heard of a woman that had it for six months. Her heart turned over and killed her. <laughs> oh, I'll be all right. <coughs> well, I've warned you. <coughs> What's the idea? <laughs> I thought I'd kill you by scaring you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it worked. You better run along now and get that dog before Miss Lee finds Butch. I'll be seeing you, pal. I've just remembered something that'll stop you, huh? Come over here. Put your hands above your head. Hold your breath. Oh, Ben, I'm all right. They've stopped already. 
Stay down. You're getting worse. Hold that in your right hand. Now hold your breath. Bend at the waist. What for? Do what I tell you, will you? Go on. Now sip slowly. At the same time, hold your breath. Do what I tell you now. Hold your breath. On your heels. Walk forward. Right, what? Oh, do what I tell you, will you? Now go on. Sip slowly. On your heels. Walk forward. That's right. You feel the difference? No. Well, you soon will. Hello, operator. Give me room 714. There. Hello? Hello, Miss Lee. This is Chesty Webb. You remember I promised I'd find your dog? Well, I did it. <laughs> yeah, the little rascal, he was out on the street, and I uh, just snatched him out from under a truck. <laughs> no, no, not a scratch. I knew you'd be worried, so I sent him up with one of the boys. Oh, Mr. Webb, how can I ever thank you? Oh, I think nothing of it. I'll come up and see you as soon as I get cleaned up. Yeah, I got a little mussed up diving after the dog. Oh, by all means, come up. I want to thank you in person. Oh, I think your boy's here now. I'll see you later. Goodbye. Here's your oh, dog. Oh, my <laughs> darling. And to think he was almost run over by a truck. Oh, Agatha. Are you sure Mr. Webb is all right? Webb? Sure, he's all right. Oh, I'm so glad. He might have been killed by that truck. Truck? What truck? Why, the one Butch was under. Well, look who's here. I told you he'd come back. Oh, but he didn't come back. A very nice man found him. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Oh, Mr. Webb, thank you so much. Oh, it's all right. Won't you come in? Certainly. <laughs> That'll be all, Ben. What do you mean, that'll be all? Miss Lee, he didn't find the dog under a truck. I found in his dresser drawer. Why, Ben, you know it was a beer truck. There it was, bearing down on the poor little... Chesty, how can you lie like that? Miss Lee, he stole that dog to give to his girl, Opal. My girl, Opal? She's your girl. Well, she's yours now. Miss, Miss Lee, it isn't my girl. Look it's here, it doesn't make any difference, boys. I have my butch, and that's all that matters. Well, that's exactly what I said. Certainly. And to show my appreciation, I'm going to ask you both to dinner. Oh, isn't that swell? Here? No, I sing in the pub room downstairs. And since tonight is American Legion night, I'd like you both to be my guests. Fine, what time? Where will I meet you? I'll have a table reserved. Well, that's great. We'll see you down there later then, Ben. What do you mean? I'll see you both down there later. Oh. From every coast we send our toast. From coast to coast, Italy, up, pum, pum. We are the millionaires, rich, poor, and millionaires. Italy, up, pum, pum. Italy, up, pum, pum. What are you doing in there? Steaming clams? Yeah! We are the legionnaires. <laughs> we are Hey, the telephone's ringing. Huh? Hello? Oh, yeah, yeah, just a minute. Hey, Ben. Hello. You want it on the telephone? Who is it? Miss Lee. Miss Lee. Hey. You've been crossing me up again? Hey, open that door, will you? Da, 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 da. Put me on to Miss Lee's apartment, please. Uh, <coughs> hello, Miss Lee. This is Ben Wheeler talking. Yes, I just called up to let you know that Chesty won't be with us tonight. Too bad. You wouldn't say so if you knew him. Well, yeah, I hate to talk about a fellow legionnaire like this, but, but really is no good. Yeah, I'll see you. Hey, give me that phone, you big double cross. Oh. Oh. 
Who that showgirl is is tougher. Yeah, but we gotta be careful, Ben. That kid thinks he's in love. Now we gotta act smart. Oh, don't you worry about me. I'll soon find out who the babe is and go down and read her the riot act. You better let me handle this. I know what to do. Yeah. Hello, Hello, Ben. How I'd are never have known you. Come in, come in. Jesse. <laughs> Hiya, Jack. Boy, you've grown like a weed. Sit down. Thanks. Well, how are things down in the New York office? Well, how's Dad? Oh, fine. Couldn't be better. Say, they only made one Homer Bundy and then broke the mold. <laughs> We're just getting cleaned up. Come down to the office and see you. Well, Dad wired me to look you up, so I thought I'd come in and see what I could do for you while you're in New York. Jackie, you can't do anything for us. But maybe we can do something for you. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, now, wait a minute. Come here. Excuse us, Jack. Look, they're using the wrong tactics. Shut up, will you? Lay off me. Uh, as I was saying before uh, he interrupted me, how about that show actress you're running around with? How did you hear about her? How did I hear her? Now, about wait a minute, Jack. Lame Brain here is just trying to be funny. As a matter of fact, your dad did say something about a girl, but we just thought we'd kind of like to meet her. Sure. Oh, so that's it. Sit yeah. down, Jack. Jackie, I've known you ever since you were a little pup. And I couldn't bear to see you make a mistake. Now, how do you know this little is on the level? Wait a minute, Ben. Now, you're talking about somebody you don't know. Yes, but I know women. Oh, now, wait a minute. Look, Jack, Will you he... stop interrupting? As I said before, I know women. Now, you're too nice a boy to get mixed up with a woman like that. Oh, oh let me... Now, wait a minute, Jack. What he really means it's to all say right, is... I don't blame you. But when you talk to Dad, you tell him to keep on running that steel mill and stop running my life. Now, Jack, wait a minute. You're right, you're right, yeah, you're right. Keep calm. Keep sure, calm. sure. We agree with you. You've got your own life to live. Sir. Now, let's forget the whole business and we'll all have a good time, huh? Certainly. What are you doing tonight? Oh, I don't know. I haven't decided on anything. Well, why not join us in the Palmer room? Yeah, the Legion will be there and we'll have a big party. All right, I'll try and make it. What time? Oh, about 8.30. Good. Hey, <laughs> say, uh, I'll bring your girl, too, will you? I'm afraid I can't do that. But I'll be there. So long, boys. So long. So long, kid. Ah, oh, there's a great boy. Hey, why do you always interrupt me? What do you mean, interrupt? Why, listen. Ah, oh, you Lord. annoy me. You always... Oh, no, you don't. Hey. I'm Ben Wheeler. I'll... Where's my table? I'll be with you in a moment. I'm hey, Mr. where's White. my table? Right this way. There you are, sir. What time does Miss Lee come on? In just a few minutes. Will you gentlemen order now? No, we'll wait for her. Yeah. Hiya, Bray! Hello, Stoke. Hey, this is something, ain't it? Oh, the real McCoy. <laughs> Boy, are you guys lucky sitting right down here in the hood. Sit down, sweetie. Oh, sure, sure. Excuse me, will you? Yeah, hey, you know, you know, we were sitting way back over there. Yeah, we couldn't see a thing here. Yeah, well, let's have a drink. Mr. Uh, Miller. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Some of these guys have never learned no manners. No. Ladies and gentlemen, our queen of melody, Linda Lee, is singing a special number dedicated to visiting Legionnaires. Who did more to win the war than all of the boys in the trenches? Strange as it appears, it was that lady from Armentiers. You recall how they would fall and crowd all available benches. She was the toast and what a hostess to your Uncle Sam. Why do I shout and rave about her? Don't you know who I am? I'm the daughter of Mademoiselle, Mademoiselle you remember so well, that hinky dinky beautiful bell from Armentiers. I'm the image of Mademoiselle, amorous glamorous Mademoiselle, who left a million broken hearts for souvenirs. Long ago she did her bit for France, but today, oh, oh she wouldn't stand a chance. Now she's older and feeble as well. I carry on for the mademoiselle. 
I ought to, for I am her daughter, the loveliest belle from Armentier. She's older and feeble as well. I carry on for the mademoiselle. I ought her for I am her daughter, the loveliest belle from Armenty. The loveliest, amorous, amorous belle from Armenty. Hey, Ben, I got an idea. Yeah? And it's to double-cross me again, eh? No, but... Well, no, forget no, no. it. Say, now, forget wait a minute. it. It isn't about you, it's about Jack. Well, what about him? Well, now, look. The way to make a guy forget something he's got is to show him something better, ain't it? Yeah, that's swell. But what does it mean? Why don't we get Miss Lee to make a play for Jack? She's the kind of a girl who could make a fella forget he ever knew anyone else. You mean kid him along? Sure, now you're clicking, Ben. Do you know sometimes you show a suggestion of a brain? Do you think she'll do it? Well, she seems like a good scout. No harm in asking her. Okay, but let me ask her. She'll do it for me. Well, don't mess it up like you usually do. Good evening, Mr. Bundy. Oh, oh. good evening, Henry. A table? Uh, no, I'm joining some friends, but I'm going back to the dressing room to say hello first. Oh, yes, yes, she's just finished. <laughs> Thank you, Henry. Oh, hello, Ruth. Will you tell Marge I'm here? Yeah, just a minute. Hey, Marge, your heartbeat's here. Hi. Well, what are you doing here so early? I just came over to tell you that after you're through tonight, we're going over to Greenwich and be married. Tonight? Are you crazy? How about you? Why wait? Well, what about your father? Oh, I'll phone him the news tomorrow. Now, wait a minute. Why the sudden rush? What's happened? Oh, pardon me. Hello, Linda. Not a quarrel, I hope. No, but we're leading up to one. She doesn't marry me tonight. Oh. Yes, but he wants me to run away and marry him without telling his father. Well, you're not going to marry his father, are you? <laughs> Linda, you don't understand. No, maybe that's my trouble. Always a bridesmaid, but never a bride. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> but you still haven't explained this rush act. Right over here, Miss Lee. Thank you. Do you think I deserted you? Well, I'd have stayed here until that joint closed. <laughs> you know, Miss Lee, you're a real artist. Yes, and that goes for me, too. But in spades. Are you hungry? Starve. Oh, I'll fix that. Hey, Garcon. Why, that's French. Sure, I picked it up over there. Oh, oh, well. I heard him ask a lady what time it was. Once and she slapped his face. <laughs> Don't pay any attention to him. What will you have? Je veux la table d'hôte. Avec pigeon et vin blanc. Oui, mademoiselle. Je veux le même avec l'exception le beefsteak saignant. Et du vin blanc, monsieur? Non, je pense que je préfère vin rouge. Oui, monsieur. Et vous, monsieur? I'll have the same as him. Très bien, monsieur. It better be good. <laughs> oh, Miss Lee, cigarette? Oh, yes, thank you. Oh, how's Butch? Yes, how is the little vagabond? <laughs> He's all right. Now. Yes, and let me tell you something. 
He was never under no trucks. Because... <laughs> you know, Miss Lee, Ben and I were just talking before you came in. We were wondering if we could ask you to do us a little favor. Well, of course. What is it? Uh, well, it's like this, you see. Our boss's son has fell in love with a gold digger. Mm -hmm. And she's dragging him right down the gutter with her. Yes, and the poor old man's at home pining his heart away. Sure, this kid's just a hunk of clay in her hands. Just a gob of mutt. There you are, and he's throwing away home, position, money, influence of the whole works. I tell you, she's making a regular tramp of him. <laughs> Honest, Miss Lee, she's a cold-blooded snake with this poor kid in her coils. Sounds like a horrible creature. Oh, you haven't scratched the surface. But what can I do about this? <laughs> what can you do about it? Why, lady, you're the answer to Homer Bundy's prayers. Who? Homer Bundy. You see, that's Jack's father. And we were thinking that if you were introduced to him, you could sort of, well, uh, win him away from this girl. You say his name is Jack Bundy? That's yeah. right. How about it? There they are over the first... Oh, for Pete's sake, Linda's with them. Well, what is that to... That gives me a swell idea. Marge, you come over the table after a while and pretend we've never met before. But why? I haven't time to explain now. Just leave everything to me. Now, scoop before they see you. Well, suppose the old gentleman's mistaken about the girl. No, no. She's a showgirl, and that's enough for him. Oh, is it? Well, now, Miss Lee, you know how some now, fathers are. Will you do it, please? Money's no object. Oh, come on, Miss Lee, be a pal. All right, boys. I'll give it a try. Swell, <laughs> <that> girl. <laughs> Why, you're a cinch. Five minutes with you and you forget he ever knew the other goon. Goon? <laughs> yeah. So, you found out it was Linda after all. Yeah. Huh? huh? And now that you know it's Linda, you can go back and tell Dad that he'll never separate us. But you, you mean, mean that she's... You have nothing to explain, dear. I'm sure the boys will excuse us if we dance. Oh, yes. Please excuse us. She was dragging him in the gutter. <laughs> yeah. And you said she was a cold-blooded snake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Bundy, have you gone crazy? Not yet. Linda, you've got to help me. How? By pretending you're the girl I'm in love with. But I've already pretended I don't even know you. Well, that's swell. They'll think you're trying to cover up. Now, here's what we'll do. Well, you sure got to hand it to her. She certainly let us cut our own throats. There's nothing she don't know now. <clears throat> Swell idea you had. Ho, ho. Well, maybe you can think of something better. Say, maybe I can. What, for instance? What, for instance? Phew. I'll bet I can take it away from Jack and make her fall in love with me. <laughs> That's a swell idea. There's only one thing the matter with it. She's more likely to fall in love with me. You? Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. There's only one difference between you and me. And that is, I'm doing it for Homer. So lay off, see? Okay, palsy walsy. But don't forget, Linda may be a little choosy. Maybe she is. And maybe she ain't. <laughs> When Marge comes over to the table, you ought to introduce us as though we've never met. Looks like I'm going to have a hands full during the convention. Why, we'll just be one big happy family and have a great time at Dad's expense. Mm. Miss, you look beautiful. Miss Lee, I want... Sit down, Jack. Miss Lee, I want to apologize for those very embarrassing remarks he made to you. I made? Yes, you made. Now, wait a minute. You apologize for yourself. Miss Lee, he made the whole thing up. Why? You know, oh, I it's, it's perfectly all right. I understand exactly the way Jack's father feels about me. But I assure you, I'm not as bad as I'm pictured. I'll say you're not. 
That ought to teach you a lesson. Now, Lynn, you... Look, Miss Lee, there isn't any word in the whole dictionary that describes how rotten I feel about this whole thing. Oh, that dictionary. The whole encyclopedia. Isn't Why that don't sweet? you... Look, fellas, it wasn't your fault, so let's forget the whole thing and have a good time while you're here in New York. What do you say? That's what I say. You how got it. Well, well, Linda. Oh, hello, Margie. So glad you came over. I want you to meet some friends of mine. Mr. Wheeler. How do you do? How do Mr. You do? Webb. How do you, How do you do? do? And Jack Bundy. How Marjorie do you do? Clark. Won't you join us? Take yeah. yeah. Hey, waiter. Bring these people some food here. Oh, are you here for the Legion Convention? Oh, no. New York's my home. Oh. I've noticed you in the show, Miss Clark. Oh, how nice. I didn't think anyone noticed poor little me. How could one help but notice you? <laughs> Jack, darling, you never say those nice things to me. He don't. Well, for that, you ought to learn him a lesson. How about a little dance with me? Of course. How about me for the next one? Certainly. Oh, oh, oh. I'm afraid Linda doesn't exactly like this. Well, I like it. Oh, Mr. Bundy. You know, Miss Lee, I... Oh, please call me Linda. Okay, Linda. <laughs> You know, if you wasn't Jack's girl, I'd certainly camp on your doorstep. The way Jack's acting, I don't think I am his girl. Linda, you know, I've known Jack ever since he was a little runt. He's a swell kid, but he doesn't appreciate a girl like you. Oh, Mr. Wheeler. Oh, call me Ben. All right, Ben. Say, hey, uh, what are you doing later tonight? Well, I guess I'll have to be with Jack. Well, how about tomorrow? I'm going shopping. Well, can I come with you? Oh, of course, if you want to. But you have to promise not to tell anyone. Oh, don't worry. Nobody will learn nothing from me. You know, Miss Lee, I've been dancing for years. This is the first time I ever felt like I was floating. Oh, nice. No. But must we be so formal? What do you mean? Why don't you call me Linda, Chester? You know, Jack doesn't realize what a lucky guy he is. Lucky? Well, having a wonderful girl like you. Oh, yes, wonderful friends, too. You know, it's too bad he doesn't appreciate you. What do you mean? Oh, now, I'm not the kind of a guy to say anything, but I've been sitting over there at that table. He's taken to that little dancer like a duck takes to water. Oh, he's just being polite. Oh, that isn't what we used to call it in the Army. Well, two can play that game. And we're just the two can do it. What are you doing after the show tonight? Oh, I suppose I'll have to brave it out with Jack. Oh, can't you get out of it? No. But you can go shopping with me tomorrow. You wouldn't be too bored. Bored? Oh, ho, ho. What time, Linda? Nice friends you have. They both made a date with me for tomorrow morning. Of course, you didn't encourage them. They didn't need any. Where are they taking you? I'm taking them shopping. Linda, I don't know how I'm ever going to repay you. We'll leave that to Papa. He told Ben that money ain't no object. <laughs> Mrs. Rogers. Good morning. How do you feel this morning, Homer? Oh, I never felt better. I just shot a 95. Did I take the boys? Why, I'm, I'm walking on air. Mm -hmm. Here's another little ray of sunshine for you. Yeah. What? Your New York correspondent. Well, there's quite a lot of it this morning. Well, what's it? Don't be discouraged. There's more. Uh. Oh. Mm. Oh, dear. Here, get, get Chessie and Ben on the phone. I, I want to talk to them. I've already called them. They've gone to the races. The hotel clerk tells me they're out buying a horse for Miss Lee. A horse? I don't want a horse. What do they think they're well, doing? Here's a letter from them. Dear Homer, everything's fine. It's a tough struggle, but we're winning Miss Lee away from Jack. It's a little expensive, but in a couple of weeks, she won't know he's alive. In a couple of weeks, I'll be in the poorhouse, a phony airport. Make a reservation for me. I'm leaving for New York immediately. Well, I've already taken care of it. The plane leaves in 30 minutes. Yes. Oh, have, uh, have Edward pack my bag. I've already done so. He's downstairs waiting in the car. That's good. Now, wait a minute. Yes. Here's your ticket, and I made a reservation for you with the Palmer. Well, is there anything you haven't done? I haven't paid those bills. Well, that's one thing you're not going to do. No, no, no. I'm going to take care of that gold digger myself. Something to read? Care for the late paper? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much.
Students! Students! Yes, there's something wrong. What, uh, what time do we get there? About an hour. An hour? But I, uh, I've got to get there quicker. I can't waste so much time. Tell the pilot I'll give him $100 if he gets there right away. Don't do that. I say, tell the pilot I'll give him $100 if he gets... Don't stand there now. You hurry up. Tell him I'll give him $200. Hurry, hurry, students, hurry. Oh, Mr. Jones, you're late. Where am I? Homer C. Bundy. Have you a reservation for me? Oh, yes, Mr. Bundy. Thank you. 10.14. Yes, sir. Is Mr. Wheeler or Mr. Webb in? They're out for the day. I believe they went to the races. The ra well, uh, do you know if they bought the horse? What horse? Sir? Why, the one that... I oh, I beg your pardon. You you wouldn't know, would you? No, <laughs> no sir. Uh, do you know what room Miss Linda Lee is in? Uh, yes, sir. 7.14. Uh, let me off at the 7th. Uh, you just take those things on up to my room. Oh, thank you, sir. Yes. I wish to see Miss Lee. But you can't. She ain't in. Then I'll wait. I never said you could wait. Who is you anyhow? I am Homer C. Bundy. That don't mean nothing to me. Well, it does to Miss Lee. Uh, well, well, I'll tell you, she ain't here. She's at the, the racetrack with the American Legion. Oh, she is, eh? Well, when she gets in here, she'll think the Marines have landed. Yes, Nice doggy, nice doggy. Ah, 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 all the way down to the run, we are men of affairs. We're the Legionnaires! Company, halt! You take over, Commander. Have the men report in the cafe at 8 o'clock for dinner. Very good, sir. Dismiss! This is your station. Huh? You get off here. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You know, those, those airplane motors really make a person feel very, very sleepy. You know, I, I was really sound asleep then, wasn't I? Are you Miss Lee? You're a better guesser than I am. I don't know you. Young woman, my name is Homer C. Bundy. Well, Mr. Bundy, this is a surprise. An unexpected surprise. Oh, Agatha. Does Jack know you're in town? He does not. Well, then we'll all get a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, won't you sit down and I'll try to find Jack. I won't sit down. And never mind, Jack. I want to see you. Did you call me, ma'am? Yes. Fix Mr. Bundy a cocktail. What would you like to have? Nothing. I just want to talk. Well, I'm sure you can talk much better after you have a drink. An old-fashioned one, Mr. Bundy. She makes the most delicious old fashions. <laughs> So, you're Mr. Bundy. Yes. You have no idea how I've been looking forward to the pleasure of meeting oh, you. Oh, thank you. I, well, I might as well come to the point. I know that you're interested in my son, Jack, and frankly, I don't approve. Hmm. You don't approve of show people, or is it me? Well, now, that's beside the point. Uh, many a promising career has been ruined by the wrong marriage. Marriage? Whatever gave you the idea that I wanted to marry your son? Well, don't you? Mr. Bundy, I assure you that I will never marry your son. You won't? Well, I was under the impression. I thought that... Whatever you thought is wrong. It was nothing but a beautiful friendship. A beautiful friendship? <laughs> well, I'd call it an expensive friendship. Just a moment, Mr. Bundy. Everything that's been given me is here. You can take what belongs to you right now. You'll notice they're not even unwrapped. No, no, Miss Lee, I, I see you've made a mistake. And whenever I make a mistake, I, I'm man enough to admit it. Bundy. That's what I get for trying to do the right thing. Oh. 
Now, now, Miss Lee, you, you mustn't feel like that. Jack has always been an impulsive, headstrong boy. And I, well, I just got the wrong impression, that's all. Yeah, yeah, Miss Linda. I fixed you one, too. Never mind, Agatha. Oh. Now, now, Miss Lee, why won't you join me, please? No, thank you. And Agatha, pick up these things so Mr. Bundy can take them with him. You do nothing of the kind. Agatha, do as you're told. Agatha, don't you dare touch them. Now, Miss Lee, I insist on your keeping these things as an expression of, well, my friendship, eh? Well, that's the way you put it. Of course I do, here. Here, let me take this coat out of your way, Mr. Bundy. Thank you, Agatha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. To, um, to a better understanding. Eh? And a beautiful friendship. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> that's Dad and me when we did our vaudeville act together. It is? I was only ten years old. You mean you've been working ever since you were a child? All my life. I was practically raised in a theatrical trunk. Oh, dear, that must have been very inconvenient. Well, it wasn't always easy. Yes, yes, I can understand that. Well, this is when I first joined the Bluebird Follies. Well, that's pretty. <laughs> you know, Miss Lee, you deserve everything you can get out of life. Why don't you call me Linda, Homer? Of course I will, Linda. <laughs> Oh, we're going to have dinner before my first show. I'm going to have to hurry. Linda, there's, there's something I have to confess to you. Confess? Those two boys, you know, Mr. Wheeler and Mr. Webb, I sent them here. It was my scheme to separate you and Jack. I'm awfully sorry. Homer, I have something to confess, too. You have? I knew it all the time. You did? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, that certainly was a good one on me, wasn't it? <laughs> You make yourself comfortable. Just take me a minute to get that. Of course I will. Now, now you take your time. <laughs> hey, Ben. Yeah? You know, there's something bothering me. Again? <laughs> what is it? My conscience. Since when did you grow a conscience? Well, no fooling. I've always had one when it comes to Homer. Ho, ho, ho. We've been spending a lot of his dough, and I just thought it might be a good idea if you got yourself a girl. Yeah. Just what's on your crooked mind? Well, to be perfectly frank, Ben, Linda ain't so hot for you. Ho, 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 ho. So that's it, is it? Now, if you want to do Homer a favor and Linda some good, You'd better step out of here and leave us alone, see? It ain't the first time she's complained about you tagging along. You're nothing but an interloper. That's what you are. Oh, Ben, you'll never understand about women. Can't you see that Linda's just trying to let you down easy? And you won't take the hint? There's only one way to settle this. I'll telephone her. Oh, no, Ben, now look, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Here, now look. Ben, give me that phone, will you? Give me that phone, Ben. Give me 714, please. Yeah. Oh, Linda, your phone is ringing. Oh, answer it, will you please? And tell whoever it is that I'm out. And you don't know when I'll be back. Hello? Hey, get off the line, will you? I'm calling Miss Lee's apartment. This is Miss Lee's apartment, and she's not in. And she doesn't know when she's coming back. Well, who are you? Never mind who I am. Oh, is that so, huh? Well, I'm coming up to find out who you are. And you better be a brother, see? Come on, Chesty. What's the matter? Some man talked on the phone as if he owned the place. Oh, yeah? yeah? I'll fix him. Well, we got a right to know. I'll stop the telephone down in throat. You said it. Oh, Linda. Oh, Linda. Linda. Who was it? It's Chesty and Ben, and they're, they're all the way up. Oh, that's fine. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, I'd rather they didn't find me here like this. It might be very embarrassing to me. Uh, well, to you, well, to well, all of us. What do you want to do? Well, I was wondering if you had a convenient place to hide, or whether they wouldn't find me. Whether In the closet. Oh, yes. Of course, I realize it's very irregular, but will you understand? Of course. They might not. No. Hello, boys. Oh, I thought you were out. 
right. Where is he? Where's who? That fresh mug that answered the telephone. Well, there's no one here, and you've no right to come dashing in like this. Oh, ain't we? But we've a right to stop you from double-crossing Jack. Well, you're a couple of fine-feathered friends to talk about double-crossing Jack. Now, there's gratitude for you. After all the dough we spent on it. Yeah. Well, it just happens there's no one here, and I'll thank you both to leave. Well, allow me to tell you this, lady, that I'm not a... Kind of big for Butch, ain't it? All right, come on, where is he? I'll break him and go. Say, where is he? Come on. If you gentlemen take my advice, you'll leave before you're sorry. Sorry? Oh, he ain't gonna be sorry. Don't say I didn't warn you. What's them? Sleep, right. I'll bet you're surprised. <laughs> Unconscious is the word. Come, Homer. I think the boys would like to be alone, huh? Oh, yes, yes, of course, yes. I, yeah. I imagine I have upset them. <laughs> it's been awfully nice knowing you. Oh, yes, it's quite, yes, of course. Has Homer Bundy, the steel man, become putty in the hands of Linda Lee? Putty in the hands of Linda Lee. And the worst part of it is, it's true. She couldn't get me that easy. Well, she sure got Homer. I never thought Linda was the kind of a girl that would do a thing like that. It's my own fault. I shouldn't have started it in the first place. Why don't you go up and have another talk with him? You know how fathers are. He wouldn't listen to me. But somebody's got to straighten him out. Well, if it's got to be done, I suppose i got to do it as usual. <laughs> oh, I've got him out of minute jam in the army. Well, let's all go up. Maybe the three of us can convince him. Say, I'll just take the old bull by the horns. All right, but he's a stubborn man. You know, I thought Homer was too old to go for a girl like Linda. Nobody's too old to go for a girl like Linda. <laughs> Oh, let me help you with that, Dad. Yes, I wish you would, Jack. I never could tie one of these things. Yeah, get this coat up. Oh, thanks. It's very much. Oh, you can't go out with your shoes like that. Give me your foot up oh, here. Like well, well, I, uh, I haven't seen much of you in the last few days. That's not my fault. Yes, I have been rather busy. <laughs> yes, I've been reading about it. Yeah, that's what we've come to see about. Come on, come on. Get off your chest. What is it? Well, it looks like you're in a jam, and i got to see you out of it again. A jam? Yeah, you know, the girl Linda. Now, look here, Ben Wheeler. Now, wait a minute, Homer. You know, we've got your interest at heart. Say, what are you trying to tell me? Well, it's about this girl Linda. Now, she's a nice girl in her own way. Well, there's no use beating about the bush. Dad, she's making a fool out of you. Yes, a big chump. So, what's good enough for the goose isn't good enough for the gander, is that it? But that isn't the point, Dad. Linda isn't the girl I'm in love with and never has been. So, she told me. She told you? Everything? Everything. Well, now, Homer, you know, we were acting under orders. Now, look here. That girl has had a hard struggle. Why, she comes from a fine family of actors. Why, she, she rode a bicycle when she was only ten years old. But, Dad, don't you see that she's only after your money, and when she gets it, she'll drop you like a hot potato. Son, you've said enough. You're talking about the woman who's going to be your mother. Huh? Huh? Mother? Oh, she can do that. You can't be serious. Oh, can't I? Can't I? Well, here's the license, and we're going to be married tomorrow. <laughs> Dad, I won't let you do it. I'm not going to let her get away with that. Now, listen, you three. I'm old enough to know my own mind, and I've heard enough. Now, you get out of here before I lose my temper. Oh, oh no. Dad. Get out! Oh, get out! Get out! Get out! Oh. He'd only stayed in Bundy and left everything to us. But the moment I saw him in that closet, I knew he was a cook goose. 
If I could get Dad away from her for a couple of days, I could prove to him that all she's after is his money. Say, we could tie him up and lock him in his room. No. No. Nah. Who would have thought home would go off his nut like this? Hey! If Homer really was nuts, they'd lock him up, wouldn't they? We didn't want to bother you, Homer, but when Jack phoned up from jail and told us where he was, we thought we'd better come and get you. Well, I can't understand Jack fighting policemen. What for? Well, search me. All I know is they got him in some jug out near Yonkers. Well, uh, was he drunk? I don't know. But when we saw him last, he was pretty broken up about Linda being his mother. Oh, he was, was he? Now, well, Homer, don't... don't you worry about a thing. We're going to straighten everything out. You bet we will. Well, well I, I should think so. Yeah. Well, how does Sam Hill to Jack get away out here? Well, I guess he didn't know where he was going. But how could he get mixed up with policemen away out here in the woods? Well, Homer, you know how cops are. They're always around where you don't expect them. Hey, we're almost there now. Why, this isn't a jail. What's the meaning of this? Homer, you're going to have a nice long rest. What? Oh, why, well, you let go of me. Now, Homer, you let go of me. I, I'll have you two put in prison if it's the last thing I do. Now, take it easy, boss. Now, we've got to do this for you, Homer, if it gets us 20 years. Oh. Mr. Halligan, Professor Halligan, come right in. I won't come in. Now, I won't Homer, come in. I won't come in. I'm not a patient. I'm all nervous. I'm very nervous. I'm not nervous. I'm perfectly all right. Homer, everything's going to be all right. Ah. Ah, don't oh, do that! Don't do that! Now look, I will have to... Ah. Yes, yes, I can see he's nervous. Take him into the office. Somebody's going to pay for this. Right. Somebody will pay for this. Oh, Somebody will right. most certainly pay for this. Ah. Ah. Oh, well, gentlemen, I think I understand the case perfectly. He's a double 12 with just a touch of 32, but we can cure him. I don't want to be cured. I, I want to get out of here. Just a minute, Mr. 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 What's his name? I am Homer C. Bundy, the Bundy Steel Company. Oh, that's what he thinks. Now, don't you worry, Mr. Bundy. We'll soon make a new man. I don't want to be a new man. I'll sue you. I'll break you. I'll, 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 I'll get away. Uh, Not a chance. I'll turn him over to the best boy in my house. I don't want to be turned over. Where do you want to put? I'll leave him to me. I'll take charge of him. You open the door. But can't you Come understand? Home, understand? Can't you there understand? You There's nothing what's the matter with me. I'm trying to make you... I don't understand. I'm trying to explain to you that I'm a perfect... You are me, Professor. Are you oh, Professor. can't do this thing Here's to a new patient for you. What oh, treatment? Listen, Soon I'm Homer C. Bunny, and you're going to regret this. Right. Somebody wants to... There'll be $200 you. deposit. What? Huh? Hey, wait a minute. Oh, I knew you boys wouldn't go through with this. You were only fooling with... Well, what are you up to? Uh, Homer, my money. Can't you see I'm being robbed? You wouldn't Listen, Ben, will you, you pay for this and you pay for everything? Remember what you right. said, money? Ain't no object. Take him away. Come on, Homer. Right. We are the legionnaire rich for a You can unpack. Well, I wouldn't let that man worry me. No, indeedy. I sure hope you sue him for breach of promise and heartburn. No, Agatha. If Mr. Bunny doesn't want me, I don't want anything from him. <laughs> Just because she was in love with that man, there ain't no need of throwing away money. No, sir. If it was me, I'd sure make him pay for busting my heart wide open. I tell you, I don't want the exercise. I'm all right. I won't play. You let me alone. Come on, pick it up. I won't Homer. pick it up. Now, you let me alone. You I let me expect to get well if you don't. I don't want to get well. You let me out of here. Come on now, Homer. Don't get excited. I'm not excited. How'd you like to go for a little ride? I don't want to go for a ride. Yeah. Well, now, maybe the, maybe the air would do me good. Come on. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Good morning, Pinky. Good morning, Judge. You patient? Are you really a judge? Yeah. Oh, I'm awfully glad to see you. Say, listen, Judge, I'm Homer C. Bundy, the Bundy Steel Company. How do you do? I judge I'm being abducted. Oh. They're holding me here against my I will. I have a tea, Judge. Hit in the bottle. Really? I never took a drink unless I'm a Too bad. 
If you'll telephone Linda Lee at the Palmer Hotel. Linda Lee, the singer? Yes, I've got to get in touch with her. I know, Linda. You do? Yeah. I knew her when I was champ. Oh, I We say, were benefits oh. together. She's some babe. Oh, 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 yeah. Well, will you will you telephone to her? No, rules is rules. Well, I'll make it $200. Oh, that's bribery. $300. In case I'm weak, where's your pants? Right over there. I'll get them for you. I, oh. Good morning, Agatha. Y'all can't come in here because Miss Linda is... Get off my feet! Listen, I told you you couldn't get in here. That'll be all, Agatha. I see you read the paper. Yes? Well, I could have told you Dad would never go through with it. Oh, I'm disappointed, you, Linda. Trying to hook a nice guy like Homer. Yeah, and him just the playboy, trying to show you a good time. Yeah. Now, Dad and I talked this whole thing over before he left, and we knew there'd be the usual breach of promise suit. So I'm here to settle out of court. When did you see him? Last night, before he decided to... Shall I say, duck out? I don't believe it. Oh, that's on the level. I saw him with my own eyes. Getting on a boat, going to Africa. Sure, that guy Homer's just a natural-born butterfly. That's him. Here today and gone tomorrow. Now, how much do you want for your wounded feelings? Hello? Hello, Linda. This is Pinky McCann, the ex-champ. Remember me? Yeah. Linda, there's an old troop out I here. I am not an old troop. You are an old troop. I said an old troop out here claims to be engaged to you. His name is Homer Bundy. Who? Oh, hello, Aunt Hildegard. I'm so glad you called. You saw the papers. Well, I'll manage to bear up. How is Uncle Milton taking it? What do you mean, Aunt Hildegard and Uncle Milton? This is Pinky McCann. Yes, I know, dear. But please let me speak to Uncle Milton. No, no, you don't understand. I'm Pinky McCann, and this is Homer Bundy. Give me that phone. She don't want to talk to you. She wants to Uncle Milton, or I'm nuts. Hello, Linda, is that you, darling? Well, this is Homer. Yeah. What? Never mind your Uncle Milton. Hey, listen, darling, I'm being held a prisoner at... Uh, what's the name of this place? Halligan's Health Home at Briar. Hooligan's Health... Uh, Halligan's... Who, you tell her. Halligan's Health Home at Briar. Thanks, thanks very much. And, darling, will you please hurry while there's still something left of me? Now, don't you worry, Uncle Milton. Everything is going to be all right. See you soon. Goodbye. Agatha, my cape. Yes. I'm going away. Hey, wait a minute. Let's get this thing settled. Where are you going, Miss Linda? Does it matter? Does anything matter? Uh, don't you go doing nothing desperate because he ain't worth it. Linda, don't you want your dough? Just remember, if anything happens to me, it's your fault. Hey, maybe she's going to knock herself off. Ooh, I didn't think she'd take it that tough. We can't let her do it. Wait a minute. Hello, operator. Where did that last call come from? Briar? Briar? I thought so. She was talking to Dad at Halligan's. Oh, she can't do that. Flopped. Huh? Flopped. What's the matter? What's up? Did something happen to Linda? Oh, but something's going to. What do you mean? She's going to marry Homer. Sure, but we'll stop her. Come on. Stop her? You bet. Yes, she's after his dough. Yeah, but she ain't gonna get it. Now, just a minute, Jack Bundy. She's no more after his money than I'm after yours. I happen to know Linda's in love with your father. Oh, Marge, you expect me to believe that? Oh, no. Well, whether you believe it or not, I know Linda, and it's true. <laughs> there you are, you smart guys. 
Did I always tell you she was the salt of the earth? Well, don't look at me. Didn't I always say they don't come any better? Oh, you never said no. Are you sure, Marge? Just as sure as I'm in love with you. There you are. You've been just plain silly. Sure, making a suck of yourself. It seems to me that you two geniuses had the idea that got us into this mess. All right, get yourselves out of it. Come on. Take her down. Well, think fast, Commander Wheeler. I got it! But where are the bride and groom? Oh, they're just over here in the sanitarium. Sanitarium? Yeah. Well, uh, you see, what he means to say is, the groom's been under the weather a little while, but he's okay now. I see. Yeah, he pulled through all right. Hey, listen, you guys. We've done a dirty trick to home, I see. So it's up to us to make it up to him. Yeah, we want to give him a royal wedding. It'll mean a lot to Homer. And don't forget it means a lot to us. Okay. Uh, Wait. Homer! 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 Lady! Homer! Lady! Homer! 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 Linda! Homer! Linda! Oh, Linda, darling! My poor baby! Oh, Linda, darling, you've no idea what I've been through. Well, you don't have to worry anymore. Thanks for everything, Pinky. Thanks, Captain Albert. Come on, darling. Come to stop us. Nobody's going to stop me from marrying you. Judge Hutchins. Who? Judge Hutchins. Judge Hutchins. Judge, Judge Hutchins. Well, well, what Judge is the trouble? What is it? Judge, Judge Hutchins, will you marry us? Well, I, I'm hardly prepared for it. It's a matter of life and death. Oh, really? Please, Judge. Look. Look here, Judge. There's the license. Well, I, I guess it's legal. Join hands. Well, uh, don't start yet. Oh, Pinky, there's some men coming up here to stop the wedding. Oh, I'll yeah? Five hundred dollars. Come on, boy. We'll keep them out until after the ceremony. Uh, because... Will you two gentlemen yes. please act as witnesses? Yes, will you please? Yes. Quite all right. Step right up, action. Hey, fellas. Now, all you guys get it out of sight. And when we come out, yell surprise, and then give us a good old Bundy cheer. Now, Duck. Hey, wait a minute, Ben. Don't you think I ought to go in and get him? Don't you think I ought to? Certainly not. Give it the rest of the guys. I know how to handle him. Always interrupt it. All right, don't mess it up. Spread out. Good morning. Good morning. I've come to get home a Bundy. What happened? Oh, I guess I must have fell. I know I'd have to handle this. All right, fellas, duck. Come to get Homer Bundy. What was it? There's a million guys in there, and they all slug me. A million? My friends, we are here on this happy occasion to unite these young people in marriage. Come on, boys, it looks like Homer's in trouble. Let's go. Let's go. It is recorded in Holy Writ that it is not good for man to live alone. That it is better, that it is better that he should have a helpmate. My friends, we, where am I? It, it, oh, I said that. My friends, we are here on this camp. It is recorded in... 
should win first prize. Mr. Wackermeyer, I quite agree with you. Such imagination. Such stark realism. 